Is God obligated to man? What is God's obligation to man? Is God obligated to save man? Don't change that dial. You need to hear this. You need to hear this right now because I'll tell you what, a lot of times we as human beings think that because of things that we do that God is obligated to us to save us. And that's far from what the truth is. We're going to talk about it this morning. Is God obligated to save man? Is God obligated to save man just because he's man, just because it's part of his creation? What is God's obligation? Is he God obligated to us for anything? We're going to talk about that this morning. Now you stay tuned. You need to hear this. Many humans believe that God is obligated to them just because they are his creation. You know, and, and that's not true. God is, God is God. He made us to worship him. But he is only obligated and bound by one thing, and we're going to talk about that. Many others believe that God is obligated to them just because they claim to be a follower of his son, Jesus Christ. Multitudes and multitudes of people that do not live the life, do not walk uprightly before Jesus Christ, they feel that God is obligated to them to save them, to take them to heaven. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, they're in heaven right now, and you know their self as an abiding believer that they did not live a life that's uprightly before God, but yet they think that everybody goes to heaven. The only people that don't go to heaven, to, to heaven are your Charles Mansons and your Adolf Hitlers and people of this nature, but that's not so. I mean, people that you might think are good Fine, moral, upright people have split hell wide open unless they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord, God, and Savior and repent of their sins. They shall split hell wide open. What is God obligated to? What is He obligated to? I'm going to talk about that. God is obligated only to one thing. Let me tell you something. God is obligated to His Word. This holy word right here. If it's not found in this Word, God's not obligated to friend. If it's in this Word, whether it might be good or bad, whether true or false, that you might think, if it's in here and it says, Thou shalt not, or Thou shalt, God's obligated to fulfill what's in this Word. Yet, you know, yet others believe that God is obligated to save and to keep them because they are a good person and do good deeds. How many people believe that? Lots of people do. Lots of people think because they are a good person. How many times have you ever heard someone say, well, I never murdered anybody, or I'm a good person? You know, God, more or less what they're saying is God is obligated to save me and to take me to heaven. And that's not true. That's far from the truth. Unless you get on your face before God and repent and ask God to forgive you, say, I'm an old wretched sinner. Lord, you need to forgive me, save me, help me, guide me. Uh, you know, worse. We're on our way to a devil's hell. Whether how good we are, we never hurt anybody. We can do all kinds of good things and still split hell wide open. God is only obligated and bound to this holy book right here and what's in it. We have to understand that. These messages need to get out. People need to hear it. I know a lot of times people don't want to hear the truth, but it's only the truth that's going to set you free. You know, but what and who is God obligated if he is even obligated to anything at all? We just said that he's obligated to this, to what he says in his book. To get the true understanding of this question, we first must understand who God is and that he cannot be changed or manipulated. You know, a lot of times, why do you think we have all these different denominations with all their old creeds and their own doctrines and stuff? Because they try to manipulate God, change Him into something that He's not. That's in this book where it says, they'll try to change me into something that I am not. To fulfill and fit their own means, their own selfish, sinful means. And God will not be changed. God is the final authority. God is the Word. And we cannot change God no way, shape, or form. He can't be manipulated. We can't do enough things. We can't give enough money. We can't do enough good deeds to make God save us and take us to heaven, friend. We have to go by way of the cross. That's the only way, friend. But these things that we will do things, you'll do good deeds once that you become born again, saved, blood-bought Christian. You'll want to do good things to, to, to help uh, propagate the gospel of Christ to, to uh, exemplify that you are a Christian, that you are Christ-like. We want to do those things. But that's not the things that's going to save you and get you to heaven. You can't do this over here and then live this way over here. And the devil says, you're okay. Remember, remember, you did this over here. You, you were a, a, an altar boy or you were an usher in the church or you were a Sunday school teacher or you were this or that. And God's obligated to save you and to take you to heaven because you did all those different things. Friend, that is a lie right from the pit of hell, and you'll split hell wide open if you believe it. He is God, and He is obligated to no man for anything. The sooner you know that, the better off you're going to be.
going to be. He's God and He's obligated to no man for anything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He owns everything. It's all His. He owns it all. He made it all. He created it all. He is the creator and He owns it all. And He's, he's a debtor to no man. The only thing I said that He's bound to is this holy book right here. You don't find it in here. That's why people run around looking for a book that they will find something in what they're sinning and doing. They want to look for something, some book to condone what they're doing. Let me tell you something. I read nothing out about the King James Bible. I don't care what you read out of. If you read out of something else where it take, add to or take away, the Bible said let, it be, let, let that person be accursed. And let that person who wrote it, let that person who believe it be accursed. And that's exactly what it is. If you are adding to or taking away from this holy book, friend, you are in trouble. Um, God, excuse me, God does not have to barter. He's not a barter. He doesn't have to barter. He doesn't have to barter with man. You don't have to play. Let's make a deal. He is the final authority, and His word is forever settled in heaven. Hear me. God's word is forever settled in heaven. If He said it, it's settled in heaven. There's, 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 there's no, no other word. Nobody else's word, no denomination, no organization, no nobody, no overseer, no priest, no pope, no anybody, no bishop, no nobody that has authority over top of what's in its holy book. If God said it, you better live by it. Amen? Or you'll die by it spiritually and otherwise. You know, it doesn't matter what we think. It only matters what God says in this holy book. It doesn't matter what we think. We can think all kinds of things and still split hell wide open. We can listen to all kinds of other things. Let me tell you something. A lot of these people, a lot of churches, a lot of, they go by their own doctrines and creeds, all these traditions. God said in his word, he said that, that you've made my word of God of none effect because of all your traditions. I ain't talking about just the Catholic church or the Mormon church. Or, I'm talking about all the churches. They have all these different traditions and things they hand down. They do because they have baby dedications and things like that. That's going to save that baby. That's going to save us. All these different things that we do, and it's going to keep us. We're going to do visitation. We're going to knock on doors, and we're going to go see all these people. And I got 500 people I've invited to church, and 300 have signed cards and said they've give, given God permission to save them by signing this card. And, uh, you know, that isn't going to get you anywhere with God. The only thing that's going to get you anywhere with God is if you go to God by way of His Son through the cross and live in this holy book. That's the only thing that's going to do it. i tell you the truth. You need to hear this. There's no higher authority than God. What He says is final. we got to understand it. There's no, no, no overseer, no bishop. No, no general overseer, no denomination, creed, doctrine, whatever. If it ain't in this book, excuse me for saying it ain't, but if it's not in this book, friend, you better believe that it ain't of God. You, if, if, it's, if it's in here, you better take it. There's yeas and amens, and you better believe it. It's in this book. There's, he's the final authority. The writer of Hebrews 6.13 spoke of his authority by saying, when God made a promise to Abraham, he made a promise. And if he made a promise, if he makes a promise to you, friend, he's going to keep it. And if he makes a promise to you, he, you, you can already find it. It's already, and he's not going to speak anything to you that, we have, that he has already spoken to us in this word. Are you listening to me? When God comes and tells you something, if somebody comes and says, God spoke to me to tell you this, if it ain't in that word, friend, you better not believe it. And I'll tell you what, and God's not going to tell you anything that he ain't already told you through this word. He's not going to tell, you, tell somebody to tell you something that he's not going to speak to you, to you himself as well. Hello? God is the final authority. The writer of Hebrews 6.13 spoke his authority by saying when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Because he, there's no one greater than him. He is the final authority. He swore by himself. He said, by me, by my words, by my words. He said, he looked around, look, there's nobody. There's nobody that I can tell you that will have more authority, Abraham, than me. He said, i got to tell you by myself because I promise you by myself. He, as God, is obligated to no man but himself. Hear me. He's obligated to no man. He's only obligated to himself. I'm going to tell you something here. Now listen, I want you to hear this. To put it plainly. He is only obligated to us by what he says in his word. Hear me. For the word was with God and the word was God. God and the word, his word are the same. If he said it in his word, that's God himself speaking. And he's not going to tell you anything that he hasn't already said in this word. 
The only thing God is obligated to is the promises, good and bad, that are found in His holy word. Now, we always talk about promises. When we think about promises, we always think about God's promises. We always think about God's good promises, don't we? We always think about the good promises of God, you know, the things that God has promised to us for good. But he said, I, I promise you, hear me. He said, I promised you life and death, blessings and curses. He said, I promise that to you. He said, it, it's up to you to choose. It's up to you to choose what you want. You want the blessings of God, you stay in God's holy book. You want the curses of God, you, you transgress against God in his book. Does not matter what you do. Does not matter how many sandwiches you make to give to the poor, how, how big your church's soup line is, how much you give out to the poor, what you do, that's not going to mean anything to God. But only matters if you walk uprightly and holy before him and live in this godly book. And that's worth an amen. Amen? Amen. God is only obligated to save you. Is God obligated to save us? God's only obligated to save you and will answer your prayers only if you come to him through the way of his whole, this holy book. You've got to come to God through this book and, 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 by, and, and through the cross, through his son. There's no other way to God. The Bible says, no man cometh to me, to the Father, but through Jesus Christ. He said, through me, Jesus. Jesus said that. He said, he said, he said there is no way that you can ever get to the Father. And he's the final authority. He's the one that's got the power to, to lift you up or to put you down. He says, there's no way you can get to him unless you go through Jesus Christ. It's not by going through the way of any organization or denomination or how many, how many uh, peanut butter sandwiches you make for the bridge people or, or what you do. That stuff means nothing to God. That's good in and of itself to do it after you're born again, blood, blood, and wash, and do it because you love God and you do it because of God, not because you want to feel like God owes you something. Hello? You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't give enough. You can't do enough deeds or things. There's no other way. You can't do enough penance or good deeds to obligate God to save, help, or even heal you. There's not enough things that you can do. To save, help, or heal you. But let me tell you something. You walk uprightly and holy before God. Every promise that's in this book. You know, we don't have time to cover all that. But I'll tell you what. Every promise. God said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. God said that he'd do it. You know, every promise that's in this book. You can mark it down. You can count on it. You can do it. You can believe it. You can believe that God, God is bound by this, this, this holy book. You know, you have to say, Lord, hey, when you know, the Bible says, if your heart condemns you not. If your heart condemns you not, you're walking upright and holy before God. You can go to God through this book. But the problem is, too many people aren't walking upright and holy before God. And they're condemned by their own lifestyle. I'm talking about pastors, teachers, preachers, evangelists. Why do you think we got this mess in this world that we got? We have this mess in this world because the church is in the mess. Pastors are in a mess. They're teaching their people to be in a mess. And God, God reacts violently to that. You know, because he's long-suffering and merciful, he can just pull the plug right this second. But he's hoping. He's hoping. It's like, it's like when, the, when the master came out to that tree there and said, Ah, that thing ain't worth nothing. It's, it, it ain't producing nothing. He said, Why cumber if that ground? He told the servants, Jump it down. Throw in the fire. Burn it. But the servants said, he said it, it, You know, who represents Jesus. He said, Lord. He said, Lord. He said, let, let, me, let me deal with it a little bit. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me dig around a little bit and dung it a little bit, fertilize it a little bit. And he said, he said, he said If it produces next year, well, well, if not, then we'll do something. And that's exactly what's happening right now. God's dealing with us through His Son. Hoping, 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 hoping that, that we will come to a place of ourselves and get on our face before Him repentance. He does not want to have to bring great, great... He doesn't want atomic bomb to blow up in, in New York City. He doesn't want uh, our economy to collapse where our, 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 our civilization here uh, have civil unrest in our country to the point that where people are killing each other because they don't have food and utilities and because their checks aren't coming in the mail. God does not want that. But if he has to do that to bring people to himself, he's going to do that. I don't care how bad things will get. There's going to be multitudes of people that will never turn to God to our own shame. He's after those who haven't seared their hearts, haven't been seared. Those who haven't totally seared their heart off to Him. 
But you know what? You know, you can look, you can look at this person and that person and this person. You can look at the person with all those tattoos all over and say, there ain't no hope for that person. And yet, God might see that their heart's not closed. And yet we might look at somebody carrying a big King James Bible coming into church and that. They might not seem to be living exactly, but yet their neck is stiffened, their heart is hardened towards God, they're religious and not righteous, and they don't want, they don't want you to tell them anything. And I'll tell you what, they're on their way out. Let me tell you something. God is after those one. Who did he say gladly received him? He said, the, he said the poor, the lame, the hope gladly received me because they received his word and they believed him. Not those that think, not the religious people, not those that think that they got a corner of religion, not those people that think that, that they're, they're, they got it, they know, we got it, we're Pentecostals, we're Baptists, we're, we're this, that, and the other thing. We got a corner on this thing called religion about Christianity. You know, nobody tell us anything in that. No, he's not after them, he's after the ones that are humble, meek, and yielded unto the Lord. That's what he's after. Friend, well, this thing is winding down. This might be the last message I ever post. This might be the last message you ever you ever get off on that, that internet or, or the last message you hear here. I'll tell you what, Jesus is coming. I don't know when, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a sermon on that. When is Jesus coming? I got a pile of notes this thick on it, and I got to try to put it all together, and I'm trying to wait as the Lord gives me stuff from that. I'll tell you what, you might be surprised what you hear is a lot different than what I've been taught and what you've been taught. Amen. Everything else Outside of Jesus is just works, and works will not cut the mustard with God. You try to get, you know, you, you try to come any way other than through Jesus. The Bible says you are a thief and a robber. You try to come under, over, by way of sandwiches, by way of good deeds, by way of good person, by way of a moral person. The Bible says you are a thief and a robber, and it says there ain't no one going to get in outside of coming by way of the door and that Jesus Christ is that door. You're not getting in any other way. God says, unless you come through by way of my son, you ain't getting in. That's all there is to it. You can't get by way no matter how many good things you think you've done. God, uh, God is obligated to you for nothing. You know, let me tell you something. Yes, he marks things down after we've asked Jesus Christ to come into our heart and forgive us our sins. And we do things because we love God, we love people, we love the church, we want to see souls saved. They, God marks those things down. But we do things because we love God, not because we think God owes something to us. Amen? You know, many think just because they build a great tabernacle church or, or some sort of great TV ministry or something that God will surely be obligated to them at their need or, on the, or uh, at, 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 at time of eternity. They think that God will surely be obligated to them. And that is far from the truth. You can't build enough buildings, pass out enough food and clothing to obligate God to you for anything. You can't do enough good things to obligate God for you for nothing. God is not even obligated to this country because of what has been done through our churches in the past. You know, our churches in this country have done a lot of great things. We've propagated the gospel all around the world. You know, you know we can't go on what's been done in the past. We gotta, we gotta have it in the here and now. We gotta have the power of God living in our life. We can't go on the fumes of Grandma's relationship. We gotta go on, we gotta go on the fuel of the Holy Ghost and power right now of our own life. We have to have the goods ourselves. We can't go, we can't go by what the church used to do or what the church did in the past. We gotta go by what God is doing through us now because we're yielded unto Him. You know. Just because America still has on most of its currency in God we trust this will not qualify God to be obligated to this nation and bless this nation oh I know they're trying to take that off there but we still have on our currency in God we trust in God we trust but yet America is becoming less trusting in God more trusting in in the politics and more trusting in in Washington and more trusting in our God here it is woo this is powerful I feel like God just spoke to me and said, I'm going to see how much you trust in me, America. One day, one day, one day, that money's not going to be worth nothing. Only the words that are printed on it. Ain't God we trust, and I'm going to see how much you trust me, America. That's God. You know, one day, one day, God's going to see how much we trust in him. You know, and just because we have millions of self-serving profession Christians and a church on every corner... You know, this alone will not obligate God to this country. You know, just because we got we got millions of professing Christians. They don't not abiding Christians, professing Christians. This alone's not gonna 
obligate God to protect or keep. You know, it's only as the salt loses its savor, it's good for nothing but to be trodden underfoot. That's what God's Word said. You know, God's Word doesn't state that if we are a religious people, that He would obligate Himself to us as a nation and its people. He would obligate Himself to us. Obligate himself to the nation and people. He didn't say that. If we were religious, no. He says if we are righteous and holy, upright, you know, God will save. God will save a nation for a handful, for a few people. But He's looking for those. I'll tell you what. It's hard pressed. You can find a lot of religious people. You can find a lot of religious Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, Catholic. You'll find a lots and lots and lots and lots of religious people, but not very many righteous people. Not very many people who want to walk upright and holy before God and want Him to be their everything and be, live a separated life. You can't hardly find a few. You know, I do a lot of ministry on that internet. Hundreds of people and you can't hardly find a few people that truly want to hear the real Word of God. They want to hear something. They want to hear your, their ear tingled and tickled a little bit, but they don't want to hear where they're living at. They'll turn it off. They'll eject it, reject it with the old pitchfork religion, give it to someone else for someone else, but not for me. But they don't want to hear the Word of God because it's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It gets exactly where you're living at. And I'm, if you've listened to this, if you haven't been abiding by what uh, God's been saying, this might be cutting to you quick. But God's not obligated to us for anything. Like I said, He's only obligated to what this Holy Word says. What God did say in His Word was that if we did not follow His commands and keep His statutes, that He would curse us as a people and nation. Hear me? He said if we... Those are one of His promises. We always talk about promises being good. God's got promises. He said, I, he said, just like I told you before, he said, I promise you that I'll bring you, if you walk upright and leave a hole before you, he said, I'll bring blessings. But if it, he said, if you don't, he said, I'll bring the cursings upon you. God said in his word that if, if we keep his commandments and his statutes, that, that, that he would obligate himself by his word to bless and protect this nation and all who abide in his truths. God said that he'd obligate himself to this nation, to its people. If we kept his holy word and statutes, which we have not, where is the root problem? You know, God, the, the root problem is in the church. It's in the church. Like I said before, it's not in Washington. It's not in your state capitals. The root problem is in the church. When the church is corrupt, the world's going to be corrupt. Everything around it's going to be corrupt. Everything it touches is going to be corrupt. You can't have, you know, a mixture. God reacts violently to a mixture. That's what we have right now. And the more of the mixture we have, the more violent God reacts. Till eventually the cup of his wrath of his indignation gets filled and he pours it out. He said, I've had enough. And we're close to it, friend. You know, God is, I'm getting ready to close and, and uh, don't say amen. Amen? I told you not to say amen, but God's obligated to only what he has said in his word that he'd obligate himself to. He's only obligated to what he said he'd obligate himself to in this word. You know, just because you think you are a good person, that alone is not good enough for God. Our righteousness, you know, just because we think we're a good person, just because we think we're good, good, moral, never hurt no one, always try to do right, try to be honest, try to, try to be, have integrity, uh, you know, it, it, but we never, don't swear, be honest, do uprightly things, you know, that in itself, we think that that, that, that in itself will, will, will give us uh, admission into heaven, but it's not going to, because God says, our righteousness, all of our goodness is as filthy rags in His sight. He says, none of that to me means nothing. He said, unless you come through that waterfall of that precious blood of my son, He says, you're going to be split out. You're going to split hell wide open. He says, you'll never make heaven your home. Unless you come by way of the cross. Unless you come by way of my son, Jesus Christ. He says, you'll never, nothing that you do, you cannot obligate me to anything other than what's in this word. And it's only righteousness and holiness and truth that's found in that word. Now I'm getting ready to close. To obligate God to you in this nation. Talk about this nation. He says in his word, to return unto me. And he said, I'll return unto you. And he said, I'll heal your land.